So if we have a phasor that corresponds to a certain oscillation, what is then the phasor that corresponds to the time integration of that oscillation? So just pause the video for a while to work on this and uh, then we'll come back later. Before we start with the exercise proper, let's just briefly recap this whole uh, phasor business. So say for example, we have an oscillation, an electrical field, let's say, that varies as a function of the, the spatial coordinates and the temporal coordinates according to some sinusoidal oscillation with a certain amplitude. That amplitude is called E0 and that amplitude can of course depend on the, the spatial position. And then it oscillates with a certain angular frequency omega, which is, uh, is fixed. And it can, of course, have a certain phase, um, which can, again, vary as a function of the spatial coordinates. So if we have an oscillation like this, then we know we can represent that also by a complex number, the phasor, which I will denote here by this, uh, this tilde. And the phasor is only dependent on the, the spatial coordinate because we've abstracted away the temporal uh, dependence. So how do we construct this complex number? We take as amplitude the amplitude of the oscillation, so that's E0 of R, and then the phase of that complex number is just the phase of that uh, sinusoidal oscillation. So that becomes exponential J phi of R. So now we have two different representations of this oscillation. How do we move back and forth between these two? Uh, well, if we want to recover, for example, the explicit time dependence, E R of T, the, the way we do that starting from the phasor is we just take that phasor, we multiply it by exponential J omega T, and then of the result, we take the real value. So this is how we move back and forth between the two. Um, it's worth pointing out here that we use exponential plus j omega t as a time dependence. Other people, which are perhaps a bit more negatively inclined, would use a minus sign there. So that doesn't really matter. It's just a convention. The important part is to pick one convention and then to, to stick to it. Okay, so now you know this. This was perhaps the, the missing piece of the puzzle to get started on this. So just pause the video for a couple of more minutes to, to work on this if needed and then we'll come back with, uh, with the solution. Okay, so let's have a look at the time integration of that oscillation. So first of all, we need to calculate that. Uh, so that's the integral of E R T D T. That's of course a very straightforward integral. So just filling in what E of T looks like. So that's going to be cosine omega t plus phi dt. So I've dropped the, the spatial dependence here on the right hand side to make the notation a bit, uh, a bit lighter. So once we have that, we can easily calculate that the integral becomes E0 divided by omega sine omega t plus phi. Plus, of course, an integration constant, which we're not going to bother about because that's just a, a DC offset. Okay, so this is what our oscillation looks like. The question is now, what is the phasor that corresponds to this oscillation? So in order to uh, make that, that correspondence, we, we go back to what we have here, because this is the way how we move from the, the frequency domain, where the phasors live, to the temporal domain, where we have this explicit time dependence. So we just need to find a complex number such that if we multiply that complex number by exponential j omega t and then take the real part and we recover what we have here. So we're looking for a complex number to fill out here basically exponential j omega t such that this, uh, this equality holds. So you can uh, play around a little bit and, and try and figure out what you need to fill in here to make that uh, correspondence true. And after a while, you realize that what you need to do basically is take the original phasor, but then divide it by j omega. And uh, that indeed gives you the, the correspondence. Of course, if you're not convinced at the moment that this is true, then we just uh, work this out. So what do we need to do? We need to fill in what our phasor is. So this E tilde basically consists of E naught exponential 
j5. So filling that in, we get the following exponential j omega t. Now e naught and omega are real valued, so we can just bring that out of this uh, real valued operation. And then what we're left with is the real part of a complex exponential. But thanks to our good friend Euler, we know that this is equal to cosine plus j sine. So in our case, that becomes cosine omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi. And then we shouldn't forget, of course, the j uh, here in the denominator. And then it becomes obvious to see that if we take the real part, the only thing that we're left with is the sine. So this becomes E naught divided by omega sine omega t plus phi. And this is indeed uh, what we should have up here. So you indeed can, can verify that if we want to do time integration in the time domain, that corresponds in the frequency domain, in the phasor domain, to division by a factor j omega.